Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another discussion topic to share with you guys. I want to talk about whether or not big knives, right, big knives make sense, you know, for EDC. Now, let me get this out of the way right off the bat. This episode and the topic is directly influenced by Blade HQ's recent upload. I love Blade HQ. You guys have heard me talk about them many times. If you've never shopped there, you definitely should. I put links down in my description all the time, right? They're great. Uh, I'm not trying to steal content or views from them. I'm not trying to ride on coattails. The truth is, is that with a lot of knife channels, there's only so many things that we can talk about, guys. So a lot of us share in the same discussion, right? Oftentimes, I will get the idea for a discussion topic from another channel. Um, I'm friends with a lot of the channels you guys watch. Dr. Frunky, Nick Shabazz, Slicey Dicey, uh, Eugene Kwan, uh, uh, Cedric and Ada. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. There's a million channels. I'm not trying to plug anybody specifically, but yeah, a lot of us, I mean, we all experience a lot of the same stuff and a lot of the same questions come to our heads. And if somebody posts an idea or topic that I think is interesting, then I like to give my take on that. Um, so yeah, if you haven't gone and watched Blade HQ's upload, they, I, they were the first ones recently, I think, to, to bring up the topic. So yeah, go watch that. Definitely. Um, but I, I do want to explore this. I want to talk about this. I, I have laid out before you uh, my the largest knives that I own currently. Now, I have definitely owned larger knives, right? But these are these are all knives that I currently own. And um, each one of these knives, um, I mean, not this one specifically. I have carried an XM24 before. I've actually EDC'd an XM24, just not that, that version. Uh, each of these knives I have attempted to carry on my person for a for an extended period of time, right? Boy, there's some glare on that guy. Let's turn this big boy upside down. Um, <laughs> shook the camera. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Um, the uh, that was a really weird moment to do that. Um, but yeah, each one of these guys has made it into my pocket in one form or another, and I've attempted to carry them for a certain amount of time. Now, I think the first uh, thing you know to ask yourself is what? How do you define a large knife? For anybody who doesn't know, right? I got one fixed blade out here. We're going to talk about this. It's a little bit of a different category, but we're going to talk about it. Uh, I consider knives under about seven and a quarter inches to be small knives. I consider knives is very weird range, but about seven and a quarter to 7.75 inches, I consider to be medium sized knives, right? And then we'll, we'll bump a quarter inch up because there's a, there's a broad foggy line. Eight inches to about eight and a half inches. That's what I call a full size knife. That is generally what I prefer to carry. Uh, a lot of you guys know that I enjoy carrying, you know, the Spyderco Para 3 as a medium sized knife and then the knives that generally make it into my rotation, you know, that are my preference range is like the, the Shaman, the XM18, the Ritter Hogue, right? Uh, the, the Super Freak, a lot of knives like that, you know, that's what I prefer to carry. Anything over eight and a half inches to me is an XL knife, right? And now everybody's going to have a different definition of that and that's fine. Think whatever you want. That's how I define it. That's how I've always defined it. It's not going to change. I generally don't carry larger knives because it, the, a lot of times the designs, you know, they, they uh, yield a, a less than pleasant experience, you know, in the pocket. And that's based on what I generally use my knives for. Now, if you're somebody that works on a construction site and you've got a tool belt, right, a knife that is XL by my definition, um, it, you know, and weighs six and a half to eight and a half ounces, you're probably going to not notice that as much because you're, you're carrying around a hammer, you're carrying around a screw gun, right? A pry bar. You got, you got five pounds of stuff on you at any one time, right? So you're not going to notice that. It depends on your setting for sure. I generally do not carry uh, a larger knife because it feels inappropriate and I'm too aware of the thing in my pocket. I think it also depends on my surroundings. You know, I, I oftentimes I, it's like I'm I'm tempted to carry the Microtech SOCOM Elite, but whether or not anybody knows that I have this in my pocket, right? It feels a little weird going to the grocery store, you know, wearing jeans and having that SOCOM Elite in my pocket, right? Um, but that doesn't necessarily make it bad for EDC. Um, some knives are, you know, gigantic and uh, completely out of place, but are definitely capable of completing the same tasks, you know? Um, could I, uh, like, let's say, for example, I've got my, 
I wonder if my, is my pair of three down? Let's say, here, here's a great one. This is a great EDC knife, right? This is the Protec Malibu. I think this is something like seven and three quarter inches overall. It's like 3.3 inch blade, right? It's not huge. It's definitely, you know, about what I like to carry and it's not cumbersome and it just feels appropriate. Well, let's say that I'm carrying this guy, right? Is there anything that I could do with this knife that I couldn't do with this knife? Probably not. Um, in, in some, you know, I mean, like the, the funny thing is, is the edge on the uh, Kaiser Sheepdog XL. Let's talk about these real quick. We've got a Microtech SOCOM Elite uh, at a little over nine inches. We've got the uh, Kaiser Sheepdog XL at, I think, well over nine inches. We've got the Hinder XM24, nine and a quarter. We've got the uh, uh, Microtech Combat Trude on Hellhounds at a little over nine. And then this big guy is actually big in a different way. So for a fixed blade, this isn't necessarily a big, like a long fixed blade. It's just very, it's just huge in general. It's a big, wide or big, tall blade, uh, fairly thick blade stock. It's pretty thick handles, right? This is a, uh, this can be cumbersome, you know, even for somebody who regularly carries a large fixed blade. It's just a big knife, right? But anyways, is there anything that I could do with this knife that I couldn't do with this knife? No, it would just, you know, the the convenience and, you know, how quickly the task gets done and how how easy it is to do. Um, will be different depending on what I'm using. Um, so like for, uh, let's say for example, and this is, a lot of this is gonna be super obvious, guys. Um, the truth is, is I do like carrying large blades. And I think, uh, you know, if I did something different or if I cared less, you know, about my social setting, I probably would opt to carry a large uh, fully knife all the time just because I, I just like them. But for example, if I was just going to cut open a package, if I'm doing an EDC task, you know, and I'm just cutting open a, open a box real quick, then yeah, you know, the little, uh, the Malibu is just, it's, it's much easier, it's much more convenient, right? Because you're taking up less room in your pocket. You know, you expect uh, in that situation, you probably, you know, general EDC setting, you're, you're not expecting to do any, have to do anything crazy with your knife and you have the appropriate size tool um, to keep in your pocket and it frees up room, uh, and, and essentially the brain capacity that might otherwise be tied up paying attention to the thing in your pocket, right? It just makes more sense. Now, something that I found was, this was excellent for, um, I, uh, like a lot of you guys, we have a lot of the subscription services, right? So there's a lot of boxes sent to our house that, the, the diaper boxes and the food boxes. And they, so these boxes, uh, after, at the end of the week, they pile up. And what I do is at the end of every week, or at least I try to, is I go out and break them down. And this gives me an opportunity to test different blade geometries, you know, knives that I own or other people's knives that, uh, you know, allow me to kind of experience them or use them. And I'll just break uh, boxes down for a while, you know. And uh, I found that actually this knife is a freak. At the, uh, this is like the, my favorite knife to use for... Uh, breaking down boxes, the edge is so thin and I can, you know, it's got this nice, big, comfortable handle and it just shreds. It's 154 cm, but it's the geometry of that blade, right? That's so beneficial. And the fact that it's large, it doesn't, the, the truth is, is that taking out the Protec Malibu and trying to break down, you know, uh, let's say, you know, I let them pile up for a few weeks, 10 or so boxes. Um, yeah, I'm out there for a while. I'm doing a lot of continuous cutting in that Malibu. It's really not going to be ideal for that situation. Um, but getting, you know, something like this in hand where I'm able to really hang on to it, it's filling out the hand. It's not, it's, it's, uh, um, it, it does a lot more of the work for me because of the size of it, because of the edge geometry, right? Um, that actually is very preferable. I, I will definitely use this knife over, you know, even like, you know, knives that, that excel at stuff like that, like the Manix 2 or the uh, the PM2 is also a good, you know, knife for that. I'll use a knife like this, right? Obviously not all large knives have the exact same geometry. I think actually I saw this knife in the promo for Blade HQ's episode and I was like, I, I have that. I should talk about that. Um, but um, yeah, it all depends on the geometry and what you're using it for. Um, a lot of times, you know, some knives like, for example, the XM24, 
This is an unquestionably durable and dependable knife. And um, I, uh, so the one that I EDC'd, it was a generation, well, technically by, not all triways are Gen 6, right? The generation number has to do with the specific model. So the XM18 is on the Gen 6, whereas the XM24 is on its third or fourth generation. So I think this was a second or third generation XM24 that I had bought off the secondary market for a really good price. It had been used a little bit, but it was still in really great condition. And I thought this is a great opportunity to EDC an XM24 and see what I think about EDCing this big knife. So in that setting, I was actually still working at the dealership that I used to work at. And so I was in dress pants and a dress shirt. Uh, and uh, I had an XM24 in my pocket for about three months. So this knife was getting used for occasionally um, cutting open boxes. Um, it was uh, cutting the uh, those, those plastic straps that come off the, uh, you know, if we had a new display, like, you know, if they had a new body style of the RAM or something coming out, then we would have a display. And we, you know, a lot of the sales staff would cut open the uh, packages and set up the display. And everybody knew, like, oh, you know, this here's the knife guy. He's got a knife, you know. And so I would use, and it, it, you know, I was using this knife for stuff like that. Sometimes, like, you know, at dealerships, we hang balloons. At the end of the day, we go and we cut all the balloons. I'll cut all the straps and, um, and <laughs> or the, the ribbon, I guess. So that's what I was using it for, right? Um, now, this knife is definitely made, like, it's designed by somebody who a lot of experience was as a firefighter. So, it was a lot of situations where the knife was being used outside of the realm as normal, uh, the realm of normal for a folding knife. Um, it was it was big and excessive and, and you know, had a, a heavy-duty lock. Um, and, uh, you know, the idea for anybody who doesn't know the lock bar stabilizer discs, uh, disc, the, the idea came to Rick Hinder because it, during a moment of extreme adrenaline, he accidentally bent out the frame lock to his knife. So, you know, anyways, made for a totally different setting. Um, in that setting, I found that um, it was fun to carry the XM24. It was fun to show it to my friends, to talk about it. And it was this big, crazy thing. And sure, it made me feel prepared. But because of the setting, right? And because that was the only tool that I was carrying, it wasn't like I was outside working and I was like carrying a whole bunch of other heavyweight tools. There was a lot more, you know, subconscious brain power that was like f focused on it all the time like every time I left like if I you know anybody who's been to a car lot you know that the salesman always come running out and, hey how you, you know so yeah I was doing that I would I would get up from my desk and I would walk out to the lot and I could feel this boat anchor just clunk 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 you know in my pocket and it was after three months of that of just really wanting to carry an XM24 that I was finally like this isn't working Right. Also, a few situations where, you know, somebody needed a knife and around my co-workers, they didn't care. They knew me after a while and they just, you know, whatever. He's always got a knife on him. A couple of times it was in front of, uh, you know, um, staff in other parts of the building or in front of customers. And I would hand them this knife and, my, and I could tell people were like, what the heck? <laughs> Even in Kansas where it's widely accepted, you know, people carry pocket knives. Still, something like this, this is not something that people see every day. Uh, this gigantic, you know, Thor's hammer of a pocket knife, right? And it just, it felt very inappropriate. It was, it was almost comical to see, you know, me or my coworkers using this thing for something, you know, so just this minuscule, this meaningless task. And every time, you know, the, the person, can I see your knife real quick? And, you know, no, like with this XM24, I've talked about this before. You know, I don't, I don't like handing off really expensive knives to people. Uh, but, you know, in that situation, I was I was like, okay, you know, and they knew. Uh, and every time they'd go, geez, <laughs> why do you need a knife this big? And in that situation, right, it's just like you pull a knife out of your pocket like this, and somebody says, why do you why do you need to carry a knife? Well, it's like, well, that's annoying. Like, well, just because you don't carry a knife doesn't mean that I can't carry a knife because it's a tool, and because you're asking me right to to for something to cut something right you you were expecting scissors i gave you a pocket knife it was it's convenience the answer's right there in this situation pulling out this giant knife and in my setting why do you need such a big knife that's a question that i could not answer um i wanted to say for reasons of preparedness you never know what you're going to have to cut what you're going to have to use the knife for in a situation where somebody we did actually have somebody get a thick strap stuck in the uh the the not the clamps the, the little the ratchet the clanks or the, <laughs> the i got ratchet and clank stuck in my head that game uh the the uh the the little adjuster things where you crank down and you tighten up 
this big, this massive strap got stuck uh, on this flatbed and they just, they had another strap, but they couldn't get this thing undone and it was so tight. They came to the conclusion that they had to cut it. Um, in that situation, and I don't think it was the XM24 that I was carrying, but I was carrying another pretty large knife. I remember exactly what it is. It was the ZT, uh, the, the, uh, the, the old ZT, I think it was the 0808 or 0909, I can't remember. The one that's based on the Les George Talos. It's about an eight and a half inch, maybe 8.6 inch knife, pretty big knife. In that situation, I found that that the extra handle, because that's it's pretty thick, right? That that big ZT I'm talking about. Uh, thick steel liners, thick G10, it had a 155 or so thousand stock thick blade, it's a long blade. That actually was fantastic for that. And I said, yeah, no problem, I'll get that. And that thing was razor sharp. Um, and I know ZT had an issue with their S35VN, but it was sharp, the geometry was good, and it sliced through that heavy, uh, that heavy um, strap um, pretty much no problem. It was just a couple of quick back and forth, and it cut right through that. And it was nice because I was cutting something that was under tension, that was thick, right? And I was holding on to the, the, the heavy uh, handle for this, and I cut right through that. And in that moment, I was like, man, that's a great, you know, uh, scenario. Like, and I, I can justify carrying this knife, you know, this big, heavy thing. I think that knife weighs like six and a half ounces or something like that, which is about what the XM24 weighs. No, 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 I'm wrong about that. The XM24 weighs more than this. Um, but in that case, I was like, yeah, this is justified because this might happen. Well, that was like the one time that something like that happened in my work setting, right? So it, it's a balancing act of like, how much do you want to carry it just based on like the novelty of it versus how often are you getting into scenarios where this is actually useful, you know, and, and appropriate and, you know, and those times where you're not having to use it, how comfortable are you carrying it? you know, physically carrying it or, or just, you know, being aware of carrying it in any specific setting. You have to balance all that stuff out, right? Fixed blades is totally, you know, I understand some people don't really ever need to use a fixed blade, but they still EDC this big, heavy, crazy thing just because they want to. Or people who just really like the cold steel spot. There's nothing wrong with that. True. At the end of the day, if you enjoy it, if it may, if it brings you happiness and the, 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 um, you know, if the pros vastly outweigh the cons for you, right? In terms of just your enjoyment for the thing, whether your enjoyment comes from the object itself or using the object, it doesn't matter, right? I mean, I, I'm an enthusiast. I've talked about this before. Uh, if you're gonna come at this uh, argument from a perspective of, if you're not gonna use it, you shouldn't be carrying it, I'm throwing that out the window. People buy what they wanna buy and they can do with what they, they can do with it what they wanna do as long as number one, it's legal. Well, yeah, as long as it's legal. <laughs> If you can, if it is legal to carry a gigantic knife where you live, right, then okay. And you, and it brings you joy, then yeah, okay. It, it really doesn't matter wh whether or not you're constantly getting into situations that are, 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 that call for it, right? Could I have cut that strap with a smaller knife? Yeah. Was it definitely easier to cut it with a larger knife? Like, like here's a great example. I don't have my keys down here. Um, I probably could have, because this one was always in my back pocket of the dealership. Number one. Cause I, you know, it, I, I don't like hand, I, when I worked at the dealership, I didn't like handing expensive knives to people. I always, always kept a more expensive knife in my, cause I'm an enthusiast. I'm a knife person. Kept my more expensive knife up in my upper, my, my front right hand pocket. And I kept this knife in my back pocket to hand off to people that I didn't trust my knives. It also had the, you know, the head, we were always screwing in uh, plates, dealer plates to the back of vehicles and then people would go on a test drive. So that was handy, right? The bottle opener's handy for reasons that I don't really have to explain. And some other stuff on you, right? So, uh, and situations I got into where I realized that people sometimes would get a little bit nervous after they saw me pull out a gigantic knife. It just made more sense to carry something like this. In that situation where that guy needed that strap cut, uh, could I have come at it with this and gotten the job done? Yeah, even in this, it's not really that sharp, but I could have worked my way through that, right? You could have. Now, the problem is you're cutting into something that's thick and dense with a knife like this. It'll do it, but not nearly as conveniently. You're not, you don't have quite the same grip on it, right? In a situation like this, it's kind of dangerous because if the blade gets caught in something, it's not a locking blade, it's a slip joint, you know? So I could have accomplished it with that, but it would have been less convenient and definitely less safe in that specific situation. And there are too many variables, right? Anybody can be like, well, that's why you carry a small locking knife, right? And then you're gonna be able to get through it. Okay, but 
uh, consider the infinite amount of scenarios with infinite different unique individual people, right? There's too many variables to say anything definitive here. And I know people hate it when I end an episode and I'm like, well, it just depends on your situation. I, 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 yeah, that sucks. <laughs> but that's the truth. There are too many variables. There is no, no way that you can come to a definitive conclusion. I know people really want the conclusion to be the open L. The open L number eight is all the more that anybody could ever need. I hate the open L. It's boring. You're probably right. <laughs> the open L will probably handle it. The thin cut edge geometry, right? It locks. It probably would have cut through that strap. No problem. But the truth is, is that in that situation, the ZT, the ergonomic lines of that thing made me feel more secure. It made me feel less likely that I was going to slip, right? There was a guard next to the blade. Uh, whereas on the open oil, it's this, this cylinder of wood that's slippery. And, and if I slip, that thing's definitely going through my finger more readily than the ZT would have. Either way, though, I mean, there's, a, there's, dangerous, there's danger in any situation where you're, you're using an object, right? This is the... Uh, off-grid alpha dog, by the way, alpha dog fixed blade. I'll leave a link for, I'll leave a link for these if I can, uh, all of them down in the description. There's uh, you know, more or less danger in any circumstance, right? There's uh, you know, it, it's unlikely that any individual person has exactly the right tool for the job. I mean, you always, you always hear people say, use the right tool for the job. Well, if you really, if you really want to dissect that, um, it's very unlikely that any individual has exactly the right thing. I mean, obviously, if you got a hammer and you need a hammer and nail in, right? But if we're talking about knives and all of the different things that we cut based on who we are and what we do day to day, uh, you know, having exactly the right knife for exactly the right task right then and there in the moment, it's not likely that it is, con it's, it, it's ever consistent, right? If you're going to, you, most people would probably technically, whether you're just EDC setting, EDC office setting, or you're out working outside every day, right? Most people would technically have to have two or three different types of knives on them at any one time to have exactly the right tool for the job. The truth is, is that all knives will cut and will more or less be able to do 90% of whatever it is that you're trying to do. In some situations, is it nice to have a full-size knife with a long blade that locks and, and you know, you're, you're secure and you can really bear down on it? And it's, it? Sometimes, yes, it definitely is. And it's actually safer to have a larger knife. Is it always appropriate? No, I would say more often than not, for most people, you guys have heard me break this down before, I think 80% of us, myself including, uh, included, uh, use our knives for really just like teeny tiny little almost trivial things, right? Things that we could use a, a pair of scissors for or just a utility box cutter, but those are boring and screw those things, you know. 80% uh, of us are like that. Right, A lot of what we carry is based on preference or joy for the item. 20% of us really use our tools hard. We use our knives hard. I say we, those people use their knives really, really hard and can probably justify a tool that is not necessarily larger, but more purpose built. A lot of, oftentimes more durable, oftentimes larger, right? And then less than 1% of us do insane things with our knives, like use them as grappling hooks or diving boards. Not really, I'm joking, but... In some settings, yes, uh, it is a good idea to carry a larger knife. I think if you're going uh, hiking or camping or, or hunting in some situations, yeah, it, it'll it really, in a lot of cases, it might only make sense to carry a larger knife, you know, in that EDC setting. Um, but uh, are you still going to be able to get the job done if you carry, like, like, you know, if you're considering, it's like, I really want to buy that. It's legal for me to carry this large knife. I've been lusting after this large thing. I don't really have a purpose for it in my life. It doesn't really have a specific place. I just want to carry it because it's large, right? Is it going to, you know, be something that works out for me? Is it going to be like inconvenient? No. I mean, if you're going to just open boxes and packages and stuff like that, you know, yeah, the not usually and not like the SOCOM Elite, for example. Yeah, it does just fine. In fact, it's just very comfortable. And the, the only difference is, is this just takes up more room in my pocket. and It's probably got more blade than I need. But it is an enjoyable knife to carry and it is lighter weight. I would say, to conclude, do I think that large knives make good EDC knives? Not necessarily over smaller ones for most people, but if you insist on carrying a larger knife or you really want to explore that territory, get a larger knife that is on the lighter side. Uh, materials like carbon fiber or aluminum, right, or milled titanium, anything that, um, you know, is in place to lighten the knife up. Also, knives that don't, you know, come in overly thick. These are great examples of overly thick knives, right? 
Um, but there are definitely large knives out there that are not super duper thick. So excess thickness, excess weight, unnecessary weight. Sometimes it's really cool and fun to look at like the XM24, but it is for the most part completely and totally unnecessary and adds a trivial amount of you know, excess durability, if any at all. So if you can get it thinner, you, there's milling or materials that reduce the weight, especially if you get a blade that, you know, is ground in a way that, it, you know, is more em emphasizing better cutting performance and less on the whole, you know, edge thickness for impact cutting or, or you know, heavy duty, you know, for most of us, that's not going to be the case. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think it can work. It's not going to always be ideal, but if you don't want to explore that territory, then yeah, just a thinner, lighter one. This isn't, it's no, this episode is no revelation for anybody. It's not necessarily even a video that needed to happen. It was just, I realized, you know, seeing that, um, seeing that Blade HQ had a, a discussion surrounding that or an upload surrounding that, I thought that I would like to talk about that too, before I watch their episode so I can get my actual thoughts, uh, my unbiased thoughts on this topic. Well, that's about it. What are we at here? 25 minutes. Goldilocks. So let's go ahead and end this episode. Um, guys, that's going to be pretty much it. I hope that this was, at the very least, mildly entertaining. Uh, if, if it was, so you got anything out of this, or you just enjoyed it in a general sense, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.